Um, guys, welcome to the um, weekly Ask the Doc uh, podcast. We have here, um, as always, Dr. Pleasy in his um, in his digs. So we're going to do an improv um, MTV Cribs out of um, Charlotte. <laughs> we, can, we can do it. We can do it. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the... We can show you the downstairs. Now I'll show you the... Uh, um, what I'm really proud of is is, is actually the, the basement. Um, we're putting a circadian rejuvenation gym in the basement. So I think I'm gonna shut down about two or three local gyms over here. Wow. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna kinda you kinda you're gonna kinda force me to like um, grab Max and just move over there to Charlotte. I'll show you um, your room. If I don't... Yeah. Oh yeah, I got I got a room already picked, already made out, man. Yeah, I know. Jillian has been telling me about it. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, yeah. wait till the place um, gets situated. Um, so I want to start off uh, by the, for the viewers um, to know that um, we have uh, officially launched monthly subscriptions for circadian rejuvenation. The enrollment form um, for the various options will be, will now be incorporated in, in all our in all my videos, including those of um, Dr. Pleasy. So you'll see it on, on the link below. Also, we're in the process of finalizing an enrollment form to better, uh, you know, to you know, like to better evaluate and more efficiently evaluate those that are interested in our franchisee slash licensure opportunities. Since we are getting um, inquir you know, tons of inquiries, and we're just trying to uh, more effectively uh, um, manage the flow of 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 the inquiries. So that being said, what I would like to do is just start off as usual with questions. So the first question from one of our viewers is, um, "Hi, I am a high aromatizer. Um, can you guys tell me how much milligrams of anastrozole will suppress my E2 in percentages?" I'm current, maybe if I take 0.125 megs every three days, how much would that lower my E2 in percentages? Man, that's, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I have no idea. So typically what we do is yeah, figure out how work these fucking work. Um, so typically what we would do is we would just start off with 0.5 seems like a, a just about a, a perfect dose for E2. Um, and then you go through that several days in a row, see how you feel subjectively. You should actually mm -hmm. notice a, a significant difference percent wise. I have no idea, man. Um, what I would do is number one, talk to your doctor who is, who is prescribing the um, anastrozole. Um, have your blood levels checked, see what your values are at. Anastrozole is a, a strong drug, letrozole even stronger. So being on um, an aromatase um, inhibitor <clears throat> that is a competitive binder, anastrozole, is okay. It's not going to absolutely crush your system. It's not going to make you feel uh, terrible. Letrozole can... can can definitely do that so you don't want a suicide inhibitor that's for sure because i'm sure somewhere in that mix he was thinking about letrozole something like that so natrozole half a mig um you know every other day see how your body responds subjectively bottom line go have your blood work done you know if you're at a hundred for a hundred uh, uh for your estrogen your e2 Start taking your your half mg of, of an astrozole, get that in the system, let it do some work for about two to three weeks, and then retest. We can ship you out some blood sure. kits. We can do that literally. You can sit on your couch at home, and, and we can test your your estrogen levels. We can test your test. We can test your SHBG, and then we can actually say, hey, this is where we need to be um, as far as your test dosage, your anastrozole dosage um to control that but yeah, percentage wise no idea okay um one one question uh, came from a viewer saying um hashtag hard nips 
Um, all jokes aside, um, does anyone, um, what are your thoughts about um, hard nips while on TRT? I was on pellets before without an issue. It seems as soon as I switched to injections, my nipples are always, um, almost always hard about, my, about eight months into my injections. No signs of gyno though, like pains, itchy, swellness, um, pu or puffy or puffiness. My doses started at 100 milligrams a week, made my way up to 150, pinning three times a week. Now currently at 200 milligrams, pinning twice a week, trying to find a sweet spot. So it's kind of a broad question. Um, it, are they sensitive? Do they hurt? He said there's no masses, so so no gyno. Um, so so I can ass I'm assuming no breast tissue. Um, number one, your physician who is who's prescribing these dosages seems like everything is is actually going pretty well. You know, 100 mil milligrams, and then working your way up. But I think you answered your own question um, in your question it, it, because you said that eight months in you, you start to have this issue so i'm assuming that it's a cyclical thing where you go through it you drop back down and then you ramp your dosage back up so as you start to ramp your dosage up you know testosterone you, you probably do have some high estrogen levels i can almost guarantee you that and they're making your nipples just a little more sensitive and they're they're protruding out a little more to that effect though just because you can't see the gyno, kind of come ask you, that doesn't mean you're not necessarily developing some sure. sort of behind your nipple that that could be causing this issue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've had it. I've had it where when I'm I'm pumping up my dosage a little bit, when I go on like a a row machine, one of those hammer strength row machines, and you put your chest down, and when your nipple hits that pad, it's like oh, and I mean it takes your breath away. I've had that sensitivity, but if your nipples are hard, I think that's fine. No, all right. I was getting a call there. No worries. But I, I, I would, right. I, I honestly, I would, I would probably just go get your 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 levels tested, see where your estrogen's at, um, and, and reevaluate. Because it sounds like he's doing everything pretty pretty safely. You know, hundred milligrams, ramping it up. So that's what I would do: get your blood levels tested and and go from there. Cool. So next question is, um, I, um, I don't hear hey guys, you. I've been, um, it says, Hey guys, I've been experiencing heat flashes primarily in my ears and neck, maybe two or three nights a week. Does, um, you know, are these side effects? How can I effectively manage them for the, for the, uh, for the sake of the, uh, of discussion, I am on 165 MGs of test a week that's split into three injections. A week. Okay, and he's experiencing fl hot flashes, flash. more or less, in his in his hot, ears. Hot flash in his ears and neck. So he's got almost like a uh, almost like a nice and flush. Then I guess is what I'm really into. Um, Correct. The echo in here yeah, isn't too bad. Um, the echo there is not that bad. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, um, I mean, it could be from more red blood cells and then, you know, when you have these tiny little capillaries in your ears and you're pushing more red blood cells, your, your blood is more viscous, obviously, when you start taking testosterone, it can be. So that's what I would relate there. Now, is it a direct correlation to a testosterone injection. I am. I really don't. That can happen uh, for multiple reasons. Um, not so yeah, yeah, testosterone. Yeah you're, going, you, yeah, you're going out. You're going out. Okay, Let me get back outside. You're going um, out. All right. So, I mean, it, it, that can be caused by many different reasons. I, I wouldn't blame it solely on testosterone per se. But you can uh, piece together, you know, physiologically, you have an increase in red blood cells from testosterone, you have more capillaries in your, in your ear. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. So, again, 
get your hemoglobin tested, have your, have your hematocrit tested. You don't need to do a full CBC um, unless you want to. You don't need to see your you know, white blood cell, lymphocytes, all, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, I, I would just see where your, where your red blood cell count is at. No worries. Um, <clears throat> one question is um, that, I, that we receive is, does TRT um, affect sperm quality? He, I've been on TRT for nine months now, loving it. Um, and I was told that TRT lowers sperm count, but does it lower the quality? My wife might be pregnant. I'm not sure if there are high instances of birth defects or abnormalities. I just added kiss peptin um, 10 for the last uh, two months, given the, the fact that ACG is no longer a reliable option. So that's a, that's a great question. I actually get asked that a lot. <laughs> Firstly, I don't know. I don't believe so because when you introduce testosterone exogenously, the only difference is, is the ester group on the end, which just slows the breakdown of testosterone so, so we don't metabolize it as, as quickly. Internally, that, that's all your body sees is, is the testosterone molecule and how fast we can break it down. So would that affect the quality of your sperm? I'm hard pressed to say no. I don't know this, you know, for a fact though. Um, quality has has we we've discussed this before, you know, um, the shape, motility, um, size, everything. There's a lot that goes into that. Anecdotally, I can tell you right now that when we conceived our daughter, my wife and I, I mean, I was I was ramping up for a show. Okay, I mean, I was pushing what was i on i was on txt so a test blend of sip and prop and then um i was on i was running a trimix of trend trendy trend ace trend you no try, not trend you trend hex um and of iron and mass p no problems at all now when you start to get into the newer chemicals um well not newer but some of these chemical products dnp uh, a great oh, yeah. cutting product never take that shit um there are actually, <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to feel what uh could be the worst death you possibly could have take some dnp awful um <laughs> now dnp has yeah. been shown to alter the the your your genetic makeup and that can actually be passed on to offspring. So don't mess with DMP. As far as anything okay. else goes, I, I, I can't say for sure. But I'm going to say no, just anecdotally and physiologically speaking, I, I, can, I, I would highly doubt it. So the next question is, um, he, he's concerned about his testosterone dropping. And his question is this. At three months, my lab test was 1,200 total and 27 free. This was the day after injection. At six months labs, my test was at 600 total and 15 free. This was also taken the day after injection. What are some of the things that could be causing it to drop by half? I take 100 milligrams of test sip once a week. Yeah, so that's uh i mean that's almost like textbook stress induced um failure of a of a hrt protocol i know that because it, it happens all the time it happens to myself and that's one of those things where it sucks because you think you're you're taking one uh you know supplement to help you out but if you you are mentally off that can really get things skewed cortisol my cortisol was flipped um dhea non-existent um i was not met metabolizing the the testosterone that i was putting in um i'm assuming he's getting this from a doctor so it should be pharmaceutical grade so i'm not even going to question the the product quality that he's taking that would be another thing though is you know just because it's farm grade if if you're if your provider is not calling and checking 
you know, the pharmacy and, and making sure that they're up to snuff on licenses and, and whatnot, well, you might be have you might get bad products. Um, so there's a whole multitude of things that would need to be done. Test for um, cortisol, test for SHBG, test for E2, run your ratio of E2 to total test. You can see how well you are actually utilizing your test. It doesn't sound like you're utilizing it very well. Check your cortisol, check your DHEA. That also gives you insight into your stress levels. And then we can, um, if you do our blood tests, we actually go through several dozen subjective findings. So I think there's 48 or so of those where we track those out. So when issues like this do occur, we have a timestamp on, on when that test was done. We can say, okay, you know, what was going on in your life around that, around that time? And then we can start to piece that together. And that's a, a pretty good segue into our, our next little venture, our, our mental health side of the, the wellness business that we are creating which will be coming soon, but not very soon. So that's why we're, we're kind of piecing all of this together to make people as whole as possible. The circadian rhythm, you know, 24 seven, that's what we're trying to do over here. Definitely. So um, the last question for the day um, is concerning um, the product Clomid. I started testosterone and ACG about a month ago and had a really bad reaction. It caused palpitations and panic attacks. I've been off for two weeks now, and I'm still having uncomfortable chest pains, but not as often. My doctor prescribed me anxiety meds, and I am at least breathing more normally now. He wants me to try Clomid um, so um, in order for me to possibly get back to 100%. Is there a chance that it may cause similar reactions? I can't have those side effects happen again because it was awful. My doctor seems um, unconcerned of my chest pains and think it's all anxiety. It very well may be, but this is a long time, uh, but it's been a long time of having these chest pains. I wake up every morning with my chest feeling awful and, and very sweaty. Um, what are your thoughts? I think ACG was the cause of this, um, given the fact that I've done testosterone by itself a few years back and did not have these issues. Man. Hold on, let me um let me take my jacket off here really quick. It's, it's, uh, it's hot as hell out of here. Um, so I I think there are multiple facets to this issue. Do I think it's clothing related or uh related uh in the HCG? No, um. I would question the products that you're taking. Again, HCG is a is classified as a biologic in America. You you, you can't <laughs> pharmacies don't make it. Okay, so if you think you're taking HCG from a pharmacy, you are not. If it's labeled HCG, you are not. Pregnil, that's a compound. It's literally HCG. You getting cut off? You got cut off. See if there's any uh, comorbidities going on there, which I believe there might be. Um, then we could do that, uh, you know, a quick assessment to see what's going on. Number three, um, alcohol consumption. I'd want to see, you know, how many drinks in a week you have and in 100% honesty. How many drinks you actually have because that can actually cause uh heart palpitations it sounds like he's having heart palpitations not like afib or anything like that for a wellness base right now what i would do is definitely talk to your doctor again because i think you need to have somebody who actually cares and who is giving you advice like this so i've called him up and have another uh, uh exam performed in the meantime, start taking your blood pressure. I would take it three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. And then I would also start taking your uh, resting heart rate. So we want to keep our resting heart rate at, you know, 50 to 70, sometimes a little higher, a little lower. That's where we want to be. If that is skewed, if it's abnormally high, 
could have some anxiety. That's probably why he put him put him on Xanax or some other um, Prozac, something like that. Um, that's where I would start off with that. I, I don't think you can blame the heart issues solely on testosterone and HCG unless those products are not what they say they are. Okay. All right. See how so, fast these consults are, man. I mean, this is this is just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so that being said, I want to wrap up. Um, I want to wrap up the uh, the podcast by letting people know coming soon uh, to a gym near you, specifically in Florida. Um, starting um, for, in St. Petersburg is our circadian rejuvenation kiosks where um, you'll just be able to go in and in our in our pads digitally input all your uh, information, book your uh, consultation and whether or not you're male or female, your blood panels will be um, uh, your, your, your blood panels will drop. And there you could just go ahead and just prick your finger right then and there and with the return label, ship it out to us and get you processed that much faster. Uh, oh, yeah. so I wanted to give some I wanted to give some insight to that because it's a it's a venture that we're testing out in a few gyms and I think that it's very promising and it's gonna it's gonna really take off. Um, awesome. That's uh, great. yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Um, it's coming to an epic thickness um, near you, starting um, starting with their St. Petersburg location. Um, and until next week, man, take care and uh, have a great week. No, no, no MTV cribs today. Um, no, not yet, man. Because you're you're in that connection, man. It's it's trash, bro. It's like it's a, it's a really it's, it's bad side. Well, I, now I, it's great. Now it's okay. Now it's I don't great. have I don't have internet at the house yet, so I, it's got to be well, well, something about that's probably the, that's probably the reasons why. That's probably the reasons why. Well, but we'll definitely do an MTV cribs uh, once you settled in. Uh, once I have and, and have oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah once you have the internet connection. All right. Sounds good, man. Take care, brother. I hit you up um, after that. For your fountain of youth, Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa is Charlotte's luxurious one stop med spa. We offer microneedling, hydra and laser facials, laser hair, scar, and vein removal, cryo skin treatments, medical weight loss solutions, and much more. Visit us online today at circadianrejuvenation.com and give yourself the gift of looking and feeling your best. Book your free consultation today at Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa. It's not just a service, it's an experience.